Hello listeners and welcome back to yet again another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As ever, I'm your host Budge, joined by my faithful co-conspirators Dot and Dej. Boys, we're back in the studio man, we said. Very good Budge man, I'm, I'm excited for this one bro. 100%, 100%, how about you Dej? Yeah, I'm excited, we've got a striker here so I'm <laughs> expecting a top performance of today course, man. Of course <laughs> man, we always enjoy being in the studio and, and, and it's even... That much better when we've got a, a guest live and direct in the studio with us. It's been a little while, but we're, we're happy to be back. And like you alluded to, Dej, we're joined by uh, someone who's next up, man. Yeah. A big, strong, pacey, powerful <laughs> centre forward. With technique, we don't want to go to the base of power. We don't want the PMP. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we, we know he's next up. And to be honest, he's at a club. That's doing some very exciting things at the moment, man. And who's really ambitious in terms of where they want to go uh, going forward, man. So I think we're all going to enjoy this one. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we welcome Keenan Davis to the platform. Welcome, welcome, my welcome, guy. Bro. welcome, welcome bro, man. Welcome. Appreciate you taking the time to, to get down, bro. I know you yeah. are, you're, you're a busy guy. You've got loads of other things going on and whatnot, but you, you drove, you made it down here, yeah. man. And we appreciate you taking out the time, bro, brother. Thank you for having me as well. Thank you. Love, no, bro. It's a pleasure. 100%. Do you know what? We got to start from the beginning, Keenan, yeah? And you just now, we were obviously joking about the fact that like, yeah, you're a big, strong, pays power and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. What I don't understand is if you take it all the way like back to early on in your career when you were at Stevenage, right? Yeah, yeah. And you obviously parted ways. Yeah, yeah. One of the reasons that they were talking about like you moving on was the fact that you weren't strong enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't, I don't get that. Like, <laughs> talk, talk us, talk us through yeah. that situation. Obviously, it looks mad now because of my physique. You know? <laughs> <laughs> back then, I was the opposite. Like just skinny, just small, not really physical. I was just a winger as well in it. Yeah. So. Wasn't really in there like that, just out the way, just trying to be what I could do, skills and that. But mm. yeah, the complete opposite to how I look now, to be fair. So, okay. Yeah. So, for anyone who wants to get hench that's listening to this <laughs> thing now, <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's the diet? What's the diet saying? Hey, like, what, what, do you, what do you eat to get that the strong? protein meat? shakes. I don't know what they put in it. Okay. <laughs> don't want this for me. You know? <laughs> yeah, just, just to be fair, obviously, before I was at Villa, just um, not really eating like how athletes should eat obviously I was an athlete so but obviously going there you get into a routine and gym mm. every day so yeah it just changes I'd say that helped massively yeah 100% man yeah so as you mentioned boy you were at Stevenage then you went to Biggles Wade yeah, yeah. so how did that sort of thing happen because obviously Stevenage professional team then Biggles Wade is a non-league outfit so how did that sort of marry together um, well the whole team like my whole age group from under 12s to under 16s like we all got released from Stevenage so then all of us, the one of the parents' dads um, was from Biggleswade. He just made up Biggleswade under 18s. Okay. And then there was like eight, nine of us all just went there, started playing there. And then someone in the team, their granddad was a scout for like Ipswich. And he, his friend was a scout for Villa. So he told him to come down and then he just had a look at all the boys and then luckily he picked me to go and Luckily, or? <laughs> Not luckily, but, You're saying you know, it thank, modestly. <laughs> thankfully, yeah. I was got picked to go. So yeah, but yeah, it was good. So obviously we're in, you know, international break at the moment. What do footballers get up to during international break? Um, well, the players that are not in it's actually we sort of train and go in and train. We'll have a couple of days off as well. So go back to see your families and that. But yeah, just the same trait. It's more relaxed, obviously, not much media. It's more relaxed on the training ground. But yeah, to be, it's just the same really, but you just got more time off to go spend time with family mm -hmm. and that. So. And so you yeah. see, you see, again, going back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of like, diet in and, and, and eating the right foods and stuff like that. Is it more difficult to do that over the international break? Because obviously you're going back to um, to visit family and yeah. whatnot. So obviously mumsy or, or whatever's <laughs> got, got the cooking going yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. So is it is it a bit more difficult to like maintain yeah. that discipline when yeah. you're... No, you're... 100%, 100%. Obviously going back home to your mum, the cooking, she's cooking stuff like more oils and stuff like that. Yeah, like yeah, home yeah. food, isn't it? So yeah. You're not gonna starve, so you're gonna eat it and that. But at home, you obviously got plans from Villa and stuff like that. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, so difficult. what's your cheat meal? What's your cheat? What's the cheat. what's the meal when yeah, you're looking forward to <laughs> yeah. when you when you know you're going back home? Yeah. Then one meal that you know you you can't wait for your mum to cook. I'm what's to cook. that? What's that? Meal? It's not too unhealthy, but curry goat and rice. And oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They're yard yeah. meals. Yeah. 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 They slap. Yeah. It's yeah. a heavy unit. That's that's what I look forward to most still. And yeah, like it's obviously a very in interesting international break. Yeah. Not only is it international break, but obviously the gaffer, you know, Dean Smith has been sacked. Mm. And for me, 
like looking from the outside. I've watched his career from like Walsall going to Brentford and he's always developed young players. And for me, I thought the, the sacking was harsh, in my opinion. Obviously, five defeats in a row. But there was little things that were riddled into it, injuries, loss of form of key players and, you know, some mad results. Like remember the Aston Villa at home against Wolves, 2-0 up. And there was like some glitchy goals, deflections, ricochets. But how was your relationship with Dean Smith? Yeah, to be fair, it was good. Um, When he first came in when we did the championship, I was injured for a long period of time. So I didn't get to train or he didn't get to see me play for ages. But he'd always talk to me throughout my injury and stuff like that. So like me knowing that, I'd like keep pushing to know I've got something to prove to him. So, but just as a person, like just not a manager or just like a great person in it, like always talking to you, you can go to his office. Like there's no political stuff like that. Mm. It's just literally just man to man. So it's good, yeah. So how did you find out the news? Because I remember Sunday watching Sky Sports News and that breaking news, we've got a sack in. Obviously I thought it was another manager. Yeah. You know, then <laughs> they, they ended up saying, they ended up saying oh, Dean Smith. And I was yeah. like, raw, this is mad. So yeah. how did you find out the information? Yeah, the same way to be fair, just on over the internet on Twitter. So yeah, that's literally how you guys did too. So okay, well, raw. Well. And obviously, um taking it back to pre season, yeah. I mean if I'm not mistaken, you suffered a an injury that, yeah, yeah. you know, ruled you out for quite a lengthy period. How was yeah. that? How was it like um trying yeah, to recover? Was how tough. was it mentally? Yeah, it was tough because obviously I'd spoken to the gaffer and for me to play more games, I was going to go on loan. So I was literally like a week away from going. And then- It's um, still kidding. Yeah, I remember still, seeing Stoke, yeah, yeah. And then we had, um, just in training, I just felt awkwardly on my knee and then just tore ligaments on the side yeah. of my knee. So yeah, then I just obviously locked off the plans for that. So it was tough to take, but obviously you just got to get on with it. And how was Aston Villa with you at the time? Like when you suffered the injury, how was the care? How was the- Yeah, yeah. Nah, at Villa's like top quality, yeah, like, personal physio just all the time so going to london to a specialist and stuff like that so yeah all and how are you feeling now physically back yeah, to your yeah. best yeah yeah obviously um there's been two international breaks so over that time i can build up my fitness like on my own and without the team there and that mm. so obviously training is good but it's more tactical so players like me that just come back from injury i'm not going to get my fitness in that so i'd have to take some time out like now so yeah it's and how did it feel to, to come on against southampton because you're looking show up you i mean you're making <laughs> running in behind <laughs> man. <laughs> there was nah. one time you tried to turn and try and get yeah. a shot but it didn't really yeah, yeah, yeah. fall to you like that nah it was good that's my first minute yeah yeah, yeah. Really, like, for the first man's time. hungry yeah, yeah hungry yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's good to get on the pitch and that's mm. all yes hundred percent and you know what like Look, looking back, obviously the past uh, few months at the club, yeah. there's there's been a lot of change. Obviously, Dej um, mentioned the fact that Dean Smith, um, you know, uh, parted ways with the club. Prior to that, you had the summer saga of obviously a, a huge player in Jack Grealish getting a, yeah. a, a transfer uh, records uh, move to to uh, City. Yeah. So the club has gone through a lot of change in a, in a short space of time. Yeah. Like, what's it been like behind the scenes being at the club, you know? Uh, and how are these things that like, sort of communicated to you guys, you know? When yeah. when when Jack was getting that move, like how how, yeah. how did it all um transpire? How have the new guys that have that have come in in the summer settled in, that kind of thing? Yeah, obviously um it was massive in it, like hundred mil, so yeah. like a big thing. But we was in preseason and obviously everybody knew about it. So us players were obviously just getting on with training and then just after train, obviously, to see in the Twitter and stuff like that. Are you so, bantering him? <laughs> I wasn't really around. I was injured these times. Yeah, so I wasn't yeah. even around yeah. the group like that. But <clears throat> just obviously, you could obviously know what it'd be like. So, but yeah, it was just like, we didn't really, it wasn't in our faces like that. It was kind of just professional, innit? Like, mm -hmm. whatever you see on Twitter is what you see on Twitter. But other than that, it was just normal days, like. So, yeah, so do you footballers actually like check Twitter and see what's going <laughs> of on? Course, following man. Fabrizio <laughs> Romano. Obviously, if you have a good game or a bad game, you might type your name. Yeah. 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 Oh, when yeah. you score that goal against West Brom, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, yeah. you'll be searching. I stopped up. doing that. Stuff will get into my head. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. People watch Twitter like footballers. So yeah. Mm. Mm, we see obviously Jack Grealish, 100 million. We see the player, you know, we love him. You know, he's a top, top player. Like, obviously, he's got his move to Manchester City. But how is he behind the scenes? Because we don't get to see that. Yeah. Um, just, like, funny guy, man. Just always just happy, like, bubbly and that. Like, just, just bare vibes in it. Just yeah. energy and that. But, yeah, just a top guy. Help youngsters coming through as well. Because he was one of them at the time as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's proper good. That what was, was he like, like in training? Was he just, like... 
Yeah. Just just tearing man <laughs> yeah, left, yeah. right, and center. It's a joke. Because that when you got it, no one could tackle him, innit? So yeah, if either yeah. side he's on your team, you're winning. Like, it's <laughs> simple exactly. as that. Yeah, just yeah. proper, just weaving. What you see in the game, but just small sided is a joke. So, mm. yeah. so like, uh, sorry, boy, so mm. a lot of people talk about Aston Villa, they've lost Jack Grealish, now they can't really sort of do anything. Do you think that's a bit harsh or how, how do you, yeah. how big, how massive of a blow was losing him? Sort yeah, of thing? he's proper influential, but obviously the team can't revolve around one person. So the players that have been brought in have got their different jobs as well. So it's obviously, he's like, he's a big player in it. So it would be a big miss to a team like cars, but we got way more than enough to mm-hmm. the last season and better. So. 100. And, yeah, and so. Go- going back to um, one of the questions that I asked you before, like, in terms of the new players that have come in, obviously yeah. Danny Ings has, has come in and he's, he's settled in quite well yeah. so far. You've got Leon Bailey yeah. uh, among, amongst other players that have come in. Like, How, how, how are they around the, the dressing room? How are they settling in and whatnot? Yeah. Are, are they getting on with everyone? Is it is it is it all good? Yeah, yeah, it's all good to be fair. Mm. Um, as I said, I was injured when they came in, so yeah. I wasn't really around the group. But obviously as I come back in, yeah, it just seems like normal. Ings, he knew some of the boys from England as well. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. Emmy and the goalkeeper Emmy as well, both Argentinian. So mm. yeah, it was all cool to be fair. Just settled in nicely. Are you sharing your yard food with uh, with Leon? Bailey? <laughs> 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 nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that <laughs> curry goat, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not yet. Okay. <laughs> and talk to us about Emmy Bundia because I watch him and I just think, w- what a player! I know he hasn't had the most game time this season, but what have you seen in training from him? Because yeah. for me, he's a special player. Yeah, well, he's technically good as well, but he's got like. Most South Americans have got like that little bite in yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, tackle. tackle yeah. that, like, <laughs> like, obviously, you can tell he's a mm. sharp, just, mm. just one step ahead in it. So, yeah, he's a proper, proper player. Mm. As we mentioned, obviously, Villa have been spending a lot of money recently on strikers yeah. over 30 million on Ollie Watkins, yeah. 25 mil, Danny Ings, yeah. 22 mil, Wesley Suarez. Yeah. Obviously, your young player coming through, like, you're seeing that. How do you view that? Do you think, you know what? I've still got an opportunity to make my mark or are you sort of thinking, you know, they spend, they're shelling out money. I'm like an academy product. Yeah. So that kind of, if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Obviously someone coming in your position, you're like, you know what time it is kind of thing in it. Mm. So when you see that, it's just how you got to try up your game or obviously they brought in um, Danny Ings this season. So you just got to look at it. Obviously I was injured, so I couldn't go out, but just look at it as in, Obviously, you want to play as well, so just your you're also in the same team, but you obviously want to play in that position that he's got. So it just motivates you, really. I would say. Mm. To be what fair, about yeah. what about challenges? Are you are you in that fifty fifty against Ings? Are you saying are you, are you, are you showing that you're just strong arm? That, 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 not just, that's just for anyone in it. I was going in with anyone, but yeah. yeah. So, what qualities would you say you bring to the table? I know. You know, Budge was bannering earlier about the pace, the power. But like, honestly, like, what what would you say you bring to the table? Because when I watch you, I, I do see a physical dominant yeah. striker, and obviously, you do have the quality to yeah. to score goals at Premier League level. So, what what do you think you bring to the table? Oh, I'd say obviously pace and power. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, technically wise, like holding up the ball. So, like, have you had to improve your technique, or yeah. is that something that you've always had to work on, or has it come naturally uh, to you? When I, before I went to Villa, I was like at Biggleswade. I was I played on I was a striker but I'd always go on to the right wing mm. and I wasn't holding up the ball like that at all. It's only when I got to Villa then they kinda of pushed me in that direction to hold up the ball. I didn't know like really not what it was but that wasn't my game in it. So only when I got to Villa I just started to do that then since then I've just been progressing with it to be fair, like that type mm. of player with those attributes. Mm. Yeah. In the modern game, a lot of teams play with one striker. Obviously I know Villa recently to accommodate Danny Ings and Ollie Witkin- Watkins have gone for three at the back, two up front. But have you had to try and reshape your game so not to be known as just this sort of target man kind yeah, of thing yeah. so you can fit in any one of the three positions on the wide or up front? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, to be fair. I don't really like that, um, the target man type of thing because I just have one idea of that and that's not the type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, yeah. Being good with your feet as well and be able to, you know what I'm trying to say, be technically good. So I'd say, yeah, definitely. you got to adapt to any situation you put in, in it. So you can get minutes. So I'd definitely say that. Mm-hmm. Do you know oh, something? something sorry, no, on. I was going to say, I think that's interesting because when I think of target man, I think Olivier Giroud, who's yeah. technically very good, first touch, mm. bringing players yeah, into yeah. play. Um, 
I said to the, like the general. I don't think they see that though. though I'm trying to say they okay. just think like just a battering ram. Yeah, mm-hmm. like no disrespect, yeah. like a non-league striker. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just yeah. put in the mix up. <laughs> <laughs> see, they need to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Exactly. Knock it down to him. Hold it up and run around. Okay, and okay. So okay. That type. Of, that's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Like I don't. That's what I think. Like the general public kind of have on it. Mm-hmm. They don't see Giroud holding up and the technical side and the thinking. You know what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. so. That I'm, yeah, I'm not trying to be attached to that type of player. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Right. Do you know what, Keenan? Yeah, recently, I'm not sure if you saw this as well, and and you guys as well. Um, uh, Ben White was doing an interview, and he was he was speaking about the fact that he he very he spends very little time watching players or watching games outside of football. Like when he goes home, he just wants to do something completely different. You know what I mean? And I think. Like judging by the response on Twitter, a lot of people were like, "What? Like he's a, he's a pro footballer yeah, at the yeah, top yeah. level. How can he not yeah. spend time assessing, watching games, yeah. watching players, and stuff like that?" Um, and it obviously caused a lot of like uh, uh, conversation on 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 the TL and whatnot. I wanted to ask you, yeah, outside of the game, do you do you spend a lot of time watching back tape, watching back games? Do you try to model your game on a particular striker, or do you have certain players that you came up like idolizing and whatnot, and you try to like Adapt yeah. your game to that as well. No, nah, yeah, I'm the opposite. I love football and it's so mm. I'm always watching it. Or mm. I'm watching. I'm playing FIFA or something like. Yeah, so mm. obviously growing up as well, obviously Thierry Henry. Um, when I got a bit older, like Daniel Sturridge. Um, uh, okay. Stuff like that. He's got like as a striker, a bit of flair in that as well. Mm. In it, so defo, defo. Mm. I was always watching football and trying to learn stuff as well. So yeah, I was the opposite. I'd say. Yeah. Um, who would you say like you model your game? on today in the Premier League for example sake like who do you look at and think yeah that's the level that I need to get to yeah. obviously like a direct comparison would be like kind of like Lukaku where yeah you know, I see that you can hold it up and you've still got a step over in him as well mm. like scoring goals as well so I'd say yeah that to be fair yeah obviously you've come back from injury I mean thank god that you're fit now but obviously some people might say listen Keenan's 23 now he hasn't got the body of work or he hasn't been playing games or He's been getting 15 minutes, 10 minutes here and there. And when you look at the stats and you see 20 appearances, zero goals, yeah. one goals, it's very, very misleading. Yeah. So how important is it for you, like for the next stage of your career to be playing those regular minutes, if it's at Villa or if it's somewhere else? No, nah, definitely. Obviously to look at it, it looks, it doesn't look too good. Like, But mm. all the minutes I have got, I've been like eight minutes, nine minutes, but they're all totaling up to appearances in it. So, but obviously I know that the coaches know, everyone in football knows it as well in it. So, mm. but for me, I'd say, it's definitely to just play games, whether it's at Villa or somewhere else. I need like a good clean one of games and like just to get experience, get goals and stuff like that. So is that something you'll be like sort of looking at in the January window as well? Yeah, yeah. obviously depending on what, on what the club say, that's obviously something I would like to do to play more consistent games. So Yeah, Yeah, because I agree. I think you're a very, very good striker. You've got all the tools in your toolbox and people sort of think maybe like dropping down to the championships are bad thing. But when I look at Dom Solanke, He's ripping it up yeah, in the yeah. championship this season. So sometimes you just need that momentum, like yeah, exactly. play every single game, get the goals banging in, then you yeah. come back, yeah. you know, refreshed. No, definitely. You need that as well. Like for a player like me, still kind of young, like still trying to f- find a way, basically going down to the champion. I don't see it as a back, a step mm. back at all. You know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. In the end, you how how much of an input do you have in deciding let's say for example you were going to go on loan like that that move obviously that, that fell through because of your injury to yeah. Stoke and whatnot like how involved were you in the decision making process yeah. and the reason why I ask is because I remember obviously I'm an Arsenal fan yeah. and I remember um uh, like see, in seasons past when we were looking at uh, loaning out certain players like Eddie Nketiah for example yeah. there was a lot spoken about like the kind of team that we were loaning him to had to be right. It had to they had yeah. to play and have a certain philosophy of football yeah. um, to help him in his development, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and and I think as a striker, the system that a team that a coach plays is very important yeah. to your development. So like in that process, for example, with Stoke, were you involved? Like did you did you get, have any input in saying like yeah, I would like to play here because yeah. I feel like they could utilize me in this way, that kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. And obviously you meet all the different managers as well in it, so you have an idea of the f- philosophy they're going to play in that. Mm. The gaffer will give his input to be like, oh, I think you should go here because of this, or this would be a good move. So yeah, you only me and my agent will go around and meet the meet the different clubs there was, so, and I could choose, oh, I like this style of player, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's not like you're getting pushed anywhere like that. 
you do have a say in like wait, what you want to do as well. So yeah. So I think we've seen in the last few days that rumours have been emanating that, you know, Aston Villa have had breakthrough talks with Steven Gerrard. Mm. And for me, arguably the best midfielder to ever play in the Premier League, yeah, yeah. one of the best English midfielders of this generation, yeah, I would yeah. say. Easy. Mm. Like, how would it feel to, to yeah. possibly work with Steven Gerrard if that happens? Yeah, obviously growing up and watching him all these goals <laughs> and that is crazy, isn't it? Like, yeah. Just a proper captain in it. Mm. So for him to be a manager now and seeing what he's done in Rangers, it would, like it's just all round good in it. Like you just see all the good stuff in it. So mm. it would be a big thing. Like yeah, to watch some of you watch when you're younger as well. Mm. So like have the players sort of obviously like it's fever pitch with the rumors that's yeah. happening right now. We're talking about the Danish manager Frank Lampard, Stevie Gerrard. So you guys in the WhatsApp group thinking, oh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, have you seen the news? They're saying Gerrard might be coming out. <laughs> What's the, going on? It's, international break is kind of dry in the group chat, you know, like yeah. no one really talks like that, yeah. but yeah, no one really talks like that. You just see stuff on the internet and then that's what it is. And then mm. if you're at training, you might say, oh, did you see this and did you see that? So yeah, but it's not really spoken mm. about like that to mm. be fair. So you're basically saying everyone's on Twitter just yeah, scrolling through the timeline. <laughs> so what type of dressing room would the new gaffer be coming into? Yeah, Because um, from the outside, it looks like a... A very good dressing room. You've got your leaders. You've got Tyrone Mings, who yeah. I think is a fantastic leader. Yeah. You've got Danny Ings, who for me is one of the best strikers in the Premier League. John McGinn, I think he's so underrated. Yeah, what a player. Ashley yeah. Young with his experience. Ollie so it Watkins seems like a very... Ollie Watkins. Yeah. There's a good cluster yeah. of players and it seems like a very, very good project. Yeah, it's good balance as well. Mm. Like Youngy, and then you've got like Carney Chukameka, like he's 80 oh, and yeah, Youngie's yeah. at 38. So... You know what I'm trying to say like, but mm. in between that is all, it's all this well balanced as well. International pros and you know, people are just starting as well. So it'd be coming into like a dressing where it's just mixed and just balanced. I think like it's just a, in good shape in it. Like, so yeah, I think it's good. Do you know what, Dej? Uh, you asked a good, um, or you you raised a good point about um, like the, the the balance of the team and, and 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 the project, right? And when I look at it, it certainly does feel and look like. The, the the hierarchy at the club and 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 and, and the, the powers that be are really trying to build something for the long term. Yeah. You got players that are like around the same age. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You've got you, you've got Esri Konza, you've got um, Courtney uh, House, yeah. you've got uh, Matty Cash. All of yeah. you guys mm. are like around the same age. Yeah. It's like building for the for for the future. Like how, yeah. how important is that to have? people that are on the same wavelength as you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's people that you've got a good camaraderie with and that kind yeah. of thing. And no, nah, it's, it's proper good to be fair. Mm. Looking back when I first came into the team, there would be like players like um, Glenn Whelan and Mila Yed and like, they were all old, like yeah, miles older yeah, than yeah, me. So yeah. I was proper shy in it. And yeah. like, you know, it's just quite... You weren't a hench yet. I still feel it out though. Like, yeah, like, different. And there was no one in between as well. It was just like me... Then like say Jack Greedish and then all those guys are yeah, way older, like yeah, Bonner yeah, and that. So, yeah. but now it's kind of come down to 24, 25. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's proper good, like banter and that. And then just all on the same type of page, yeah. Mm. Match day, yeah. Who, who, who's got the um, the beats pill? Who's who's playing the tunes on, well, match, on day. match day? Oh, to be fair, who... Is it? No, it's changed, isn't it? Oh, last year it was Jack, but uh, this year... Is this playlist like, decent, yeah? Jack yeah, yes, yeah, really? yeah. He, uh, he caters to all types of people. Yeah, he looks like one of them. He yeah, looks like, like that, still, yeah, yeah. yeah. He can yeah, he dabble in any crowd, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, you can still, you can, you can hold it down. But yeah, I think it might be Tyrone. Oh, yeah, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he got a decent playlist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His is similar to Jack's as well, just in between, like, the yeah, balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll probably talk about a bit of stuff outside football. Yeah, what, yeah. 100%. You know, so what what are your interests outside of the game? Because obviously it's football, football, football. Yeah. But outside of football, we know you also love watching football outside <laughs> yeah. of football. Yeah. But <laughs> what else do you like getting up to? Are you into your fashion? I can see that the drip is, is cold. Yeah, come on. <laughs> 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 no, I've got two like there's men that are way more into it than I am. Yeah. Like I'm just cool, like mm -hmm. just yeah. I saw like, like something with Courtney House on Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he loves yeah. drip. Yeah, he loves drip. Drip is hard still. Probably yeah. the hardest in the team, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, fair. right. I vote he's probably yeah. the best drip in the team. But yeah, someone like him he loves I'm just easy, just tracks you every day to train him. But mm. yeah, but outside of football I'd just say just friends and family just chilling with my boys or 
at home with my family, just feet just yeah, it's kind of boring, mm. isn't it? When you mm. think about it, it's just yeah, just that really is chilling. Yeah, I hear. So in terms of like obviously interest outside the game, you speak to a lot of footballers like they amass a lot of wealth during their playing career, and sometimes like they go broke yeah, or yeah. stuff like that. Obviously, you're I wouldn't even say you're in your prime earning yeah, years. Yeah. You're still young, learning your trade in the game. Yeah, yeah. So have you thought of different ventures to sort of invest your money kind of thing? No, nah, definitely. And I speak to the players about that all the time because they've, all the players in our team, like the young players, they've gone through academies in it. And I've just kind of late, like eight, 17, 18. So I ask them all the time about money, this and that. So but having a financial advisor as well is like very important mm. um, just to direct you as well because you're kind of young with all this money. Like you don't really know where to put in, what to do. So... I'd say like stocks obviously is a slow, mm. safe as well in it. So yeah, but yeah, just mm. just be sensible with it. To be fair, and and how do you, how do you um how how do you ma- like maintain focus and and stay in on track? Like let's let's have it right. Let's be honest. Obviously, we don't have to go into too much detail right now, but I'm sure like. IG's popping, you got baddies in your DMs. <laughs> yeah. you oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, they can still be sliding in your DMs. Yeah. 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 So, so, so is that, is that like something that obviously then helps you to stay on track and like focus because you've got a good woman at home? <laughs> so, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I don't entertain none of that business. Okay. Girl, so yeah. Faithful black men society. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how have you found, like, obviously your first team, Aston yeah. Villa? This isn't a small boy club. This yeah. is a top six, top eight club. Yeah. Like, so do you get recognized when you're going to, like, the supermarkets and stuff like um, that? And if so, how do you handle that? Yeah, I'm with, like, stuff like that. I'm very awkward in it. Like, I'm not, I don't really, I'm not good with that type of stuff in it. So, but um, in a town, kind of sometimes, but there's a place called Sutton Coalfield. In Birmingham, okay. where I think loads of Villa fans live. So if I go there, then they'll know who I am. But not too much, but kind of. If that makes sense. Yeah. And how how do you deal with that? Because we were speaking to who was it, Joe Joe Willock. Yeah, yeah. That it's mad because all of a sudden people are starting to clock you. That like, hold on, that's yeah. that's Keenan. Is that yeah. Keenan? Is it? Yeah. yeah, it looks like him. It's him. <laughs> you know them ones. Yeah. So like, how how do you deal with it? Like, um, do you feel comfortable just walking on the roads? Like, yeah, just, like. Yeah, just yeah, it just mm. is what it is. Isn't mm, it? But mm, to be fair, most people just stare, and I'm just staring back at them. But they don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just looking yeah. at them. They're just looking at me. You know? yeah. I'm just like, cause I don't clock at the start. Yeah, thinking, yeah. why is this guy staring? Yeah, at me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then obviously, and then I clock after. But yeah, it just is what it is, and it's mm. just come quite normal now, isn't it? Like yeah. that's what it is. Okay, Keenan, I've got a question to ask you. It's a two-part question. Yeah. I have to ask every time we come on the episode. I got to ask this question. Yeah. The first part of the question is, what is the most played song yeah. on your phone or on your playlist right now? Yeah. That's the first part. Yeah. The second part is, you're stepping out with your missus, yeah? You're, yeah. you're going out for a date night or whatever. You're stepping somewhere to, to a function or whatever. Yeah. What's, what's, what, what is your crepe of choice? What kicks are you wearing on that date uh, night? Oh, so the most, played, the most played song on my playlist. Yeah. What from like just from this year or just from, from this year? From yeah, this from year. this year. What are you <laughs> listening to? Like, who's rinse? on your yeah? Who are you rinsing? Uh, I'll probably say Lord Duck's my artist. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. This year, Young Fug. I'll say. Okay. Oh, I swear. Yeah, yeah. He just got a recent yeah, project. Yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of it? I think it's cold. Yeah, I think I yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mellow. Yeah. Yeah. Mad yeah, mellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. He changed yeah, it up, man. He showed a good diversity yeah, exactly. there in terms of how he can diversify his portfolio. Yeah. I've been rinsing the yeah, album. Yeah, so. Okay. But yeah, Road Rage on that album is probably my, my go-to song. Yeah, so I'm feeling contagious. Yeah. That tune is cold. That tune is cold. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a banger. But I'll uh, crept to step out in with my missus, I'll probably say uh, B23's Dior's B23. Okay. It's like the okay. converse looking trainers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know those That's ones. Smart casual. Yeah, yeah, tidy, tidy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I That's see. Probably them. Yeah. yeah so, Cornelius will be proud still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously like your international futures up in there. I know you represented yeah. England yeah. obviously at youth level. So are you seeing a potential pathway there or could Jamaica be an option or like what, where's, where's your head at with that? 
To be, I need to play for us to even, <laughs> <laughs> to even have an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have, even have an option, I need to start playing for us. So, yeah. so that's what I'm thinking about first. And then after, I just, not whatever it is, but obviously I know in my heart which one I'd want to play for. So just when I get playing, and then I'll make that decision. Yeah, so. Well, can you give us an exclusive? You can't leave us hanging like that, man. <laughs> nah, nah. I went to Jamaica for the first time this year. And I loved it, innit? So, yeah. so okay, yeah. I mean, that's enough. Of <laughs> it, <man. laughs> cool, cool. And I, I think, think the Jamaican FA will be listening to this and <laughs> getting on their blow if they haven't already. <laughs> we would have put them on red alert when you said that curry goat and rice were. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I think final one from me. I'm not sure if the boys have any more, but Aston Villa fans, a lot of them are, you know mysterious as to what's going to yeah, happen next in the season one, yeah. mm. no manager um steven gerrard has been heavily linked with the job what yeah. message do you have to the aston villa faithful um I, i'm not too sh- uh a message i'll say um uh, yeah to the fans yeah, yeah, like obviously to, it's anyone that the who the board or bring in is obviously going to be beneficial to the player so i'd say obviously if they think we're not doing too well now it could only go up from here i'd say so yeah just positive mm. thinking to be fair yeah, personal goals for you. Like, you know, you've come back from injury. You're back playing fit now. We saw you against Southampton, yeah. you know, running in behind, causing <laughs> problems, <laughs> innit? Yeah. So, like, for the next, for the rest of the season, like, what's your short-term goals? Um, Obviously, they'll change depending on if I'm still at Villa or on loan, but I'd say it's just you get more minutes consistently playing, just trying to score more goals and help mm. the team, like, just for our achievements this year. So, I'd definitely just say that, just more consistent minutes and just trying to help the team in, in where I can. Yeah. 100% man I don't think there's anything else that we yeah. can add to that man that was yeah. all encapsulated and we covered all literally all yeah. angles man yeah. Yeah. Um, so again Keenan man we appreciate you coming down bro we appreciate yeah. it so much we had a good time here man yeah, nah, I enjoyed that that was nice man that was good, good, a good vibe. little yeah. chat man and yeah. I think certainly for, for, for the Villa fans who aren't too familiar with you now I think they'll have a, a really good idea of what they're going to be getting when they're seeing when they're seeing you on the pitch now going yeah. forward and and obviously the person away from away from the game too man so yeah. again appreciate you for, for for all of that man thank you very much to all of you guys who have listened in and watched in up until this point in time we're going to leave it there before we do just a reminder if you're not yet following us you can follow us um on twitter at podcast underscore tbg you can follow us on uh, instagram at pod underscore tbg and you can watch and listen to all of our interviews on uh, YouTube as well, the Beautiful Game Podcast. Check us out. We're on Spotify as well. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and keep locked in. Obviously, we've got uh, more things coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned with us. I think that's pretty much it. Anything else to add, boys? I think you covered all bases. Sweet, man. Until the next episode then, people, over and out. Peace.